Yeah, hello from my side. Uh, my name is Markus and I thought I'd take the time today uh, to make a yeah, small video about my UI24 rack build up. Um, yeah, it's pretty on the point, a little bit more than one year that I'm a UI24 user and I managed like meanwhile, I think roughly 20 gigs with it. And yeah, so I very straight from the beginning, I also uh, got here into the UI24 users group here on Facebook and I catch a lot of tips and I thought, okay, I just want to show you how I, how I all implemented it here and also want to give you a little bit of feedback. So I don't know if it is any helpful for you, but at least I thought I, I give it a try. So yeah, let's have a look here what I have. So this is basically my main rack here. Um, it lives basically on the stage. And you might wonder already, okay, uh, why do you see here already a Behringer device instead of the UI24 and what is going on here on the on the upper two um, space units here? Uh, let's say it like that. The UI24 is always my main mixer, okay? Um, this is basically where all the drum set, bass guitar, guitars, vocals, and so on go into probably also keyboards. And then... I have here the second mixer, which is actually having two main functionalities. So maybe, so the first reason is basically it acts to me as a sub mixer because I'm doing a lot of, let's say, big band style uh, gigs where I have a lot of like saxophones, horns, trumpets, and so on. And uh, where I'm usually running here out of channels, okay? So, uh, the thing what I'm doing is that I'm saying, okay, let's put all the horns together. It makes me like basically one group. And then you can see here, the main left and right output are basically connected here to the two line inputs here. And also the UI24 gives the possibility to split basically left and right here to like separate channels. So it is sort of a sub mixer for two subgroups, if you want to call it like that, right? And the second reason is, of course, um, it is like a safety backup because I think everyone knows here that the UI24 has some, yeah, let's call it reliability issues. So luckily, I didn't really had one during a gig, but it's just for safety. So in case anything completely goes wrong here, it doesn't boot up or anything so that I can still use that one as, as a backup. So of course, I don't have the same amount of channels, right? But... The question is, of course, do I need like a chance of drum kit or is it also enough like in an emergency situation to have like kick and snare only, right? Or do you need like stereo guitars instead of a mono guitar? So it will work as a backup, right? Um, yeah, so this is that here. Here on the top side now, I have like here, uh, I'm not sure how the correct English word is. I thought I would call it is like a rack mount. I have here basically a Fritz box, which is some sort of Wi-Fi router, uh, what you can see here. I have the Talk Listen Connect device, which is integrated here. You can also see that there's basically the headphone uh, feedback going here into that device. And you can also hear on channel 10, it is like the TalkBack microphone. I also have integrated here the powered um, USB hub, which is always proposed. So. I have here basically one terabyte SSD where I'm like playing my music during breaks uh, from all the clicks or something like that, or also doing multi-track recording. And then I just plug that usually in here, put that here on top and that's it. So basically I think this is a very clean, neat solution. And if I don't need any more, then the SSD comes into my bag once again. And of course, as you can see here, I have also like an extension cord from the record USB, which is going here to the USB hub. And if you see correctly also, there is also a connection here to the USB audio port. So I made recently also a post here in that group. So I'm not sure if everyone has seen it. So the idea was basically um, that I'm also supporting here so-called AirPlay. So I have integrated a small orange pie in that rack, which is also connected here to the network and have installed like an AirPlay receiver. And the good point is that, yeah, basically UI24 has recognized the sound card here uh, to the orange pie and I can play the music received by AirPlay directly over the USB port here and patch it internally to channel 2324. So the good point is that I'm 
do not waste any analog input channels only for like having that music feature integrated, right? Yeah, from front side, that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, let's have a look on the back side, I would say. Yeah, looking here on the back side, you don't see so much. I would say we have here PowerCon input, PowerCon loop, basically. I have never used that so far. I'm not sure why I integrated it. And we have three Ethernet ports, which I will explain you also in a minute. But let's have a look first into it because a very big point was always uh, of having a so-called uninterruptible power supply, uh, which I also have integrated here. So I'm not sure if you can see it so well. Uh, it lives here. It is one from APC. So I also have used basically a rack mount and I fixed it internally here inside the rack. So if I just want to make it on, I just get here, press the button, and you will see it will switch on <laughs> without having any uh, yeah, power connected here at all. And it just lifts from the internal battery. And you will also see here, here's the orange Pi, which is also here connected via ethernet, basically, uh, which is doing the airplay receiver. And if we are having a look here on the internal, I know cable management was not so tidy. But just for information, here was like an eight port ethernet switch, which you can see here. And here's the backside of the so-called Fritz box of my Wi-Fi router, basically. <clears throat> um, but let's turn it off once again. I hope the UI24 has booted meanwhile. Um, yes, looks good. <laughs> so let's turn it off. Okay. But now let's come back here to the um, three Ethernet ports, what you might wonder what those are about. So I have everything like Network Connect, you know, so you have already three devices which are here in the network. So I have the UI24, which has an Ethernet cable. I have the Behringer XR18, which has an Ethernet connection. I have the Orange Pi here, which is Ethernet Connect, and I have those ones. So we have already here, along with this, like six Ethernet ports. And of course, the Fritz box internally, so my Wi-Fi router. The Wi-Fi router internally, <clears throat> I have integrated to the Fritz box. It is only for giving me the so-called stage Wi-Fi, how I call it. So the, the router, which is integrated here, is basically only doing the Wi-Fi for the local stage area. So this is basically where the musicians uh, log into to make the in-ear mixes, okay? So for nothing else, basically. And of course, the Wi-Fi router is doing me the DHCP server, which is needed for the network. Um, besides that, you might now wonder, okay, what is my usual Wi-Fi entrance point? So for that, I have here that Ubiquiti Loco M5, it is called. I have here really like an, yeah, so-called Ethercon cable, which I mounted here directly into the Wi-Fi access point. And I can just plug that here into this very right side port. And then this is basically connected. And the good point is it has a directivity antenna. It is five gigahertz and it has like here a mountain socket. So I usually grab a mic stand I fix that here on the mic stand and then I, I put it in an angle that this front side actually looks always to me uh, inside the crowd. And this gives me really, really a uh, super stable uh, Wi-Fi connection. So I really made gigs with over 3000 people inside a big tent and I was having like a distance of over 25, 30 meters and I was still having stable Wi-Fi with that. So I can really recommend that solution <clears throat> because most people are just integrating like like fixed uh, Wi-Fi router, right? And then you only have that one entrance point, which is in my opinion not so great. And here I still have like 50 meters cable, so I can put the Wi-Fi access point basically up to 50 meters away uh, from my rack here, yeah. So the second port, this is basically the Ethernet port with the talk listen connect, basically, so. Uh, where you get the Ethernet talk back and pre-fader listening in, in one single Ethernet ports. And this is usually where my uh, cable drum is connected to. So this is that one here. I also have something like that. It's like also an Ethercon cable. It has like 50 meters and it's on a cable drum. So 
I usually always have that always with me. So it depends a little bit on the situation. So if I have those, let's say small go and throw gigs or throw and go gigs, throw and go uh, gigs, how I call them, then I usually just plug that into this port here and I put that somewhere on the side of the stage. So in case I'm running in trouble with my Wi-Fi connection or something like that, I always know, okay, on the right side of the stage, there's a cable drum waiting with an Ethernet connection for me, okay? So I can just grab my laptop and connect via cable to it. But if I'm having like a bigger gig, like starting usually, I don't know, 500, 800,000 people, something like that, then it usually makes sense that I make myself like a front of house place, basically. And then I usually use that drum. Um, sometimes I also have luck and there's like a local rental company already in that location and uh, yeah, provides me a backup a cat cable, which I can then just do so I don't even need that like always. And yeah, so that's it. And here the third, it is basically a standard Ethernet port, which is also connected here to the internal eight port switch. So usually we use it like for one band where we are having like an ArtNet, um, ArtNet to DMX converter and also driving here the lighting then through uh, the single port here. And yeah, let's have a look now to my front of house uh, setup here. Okay, now let's have a look how my typical um, front of house setup looks like. So this is a little bit like a mess here in my small living room, unfortunately, I hope you don't mind. But actually you can see I used that cable drum here. And yeah, basically this is my 50 meter cat connection. And this is basically like how in most of the cases my front of house setup looks like. Okay, I usually have that case here on the left side. It is just, yeah, I think that's like six uh, height units I have here. And what I basically did was <clears throat> I made here some connectors here, also power corn and two ethernet ports here into that. And I integrate that talkless and connect device into here, which is, yeah, quite nice because it's really integrated here into that rack. Um, I usually have my iPad here. It has some magnetics here so that it keep in place at this position. And you see already I have here lighting cable. And if you're looking here on the inner side, you see here, um, I have here already another ethernet switch here, as you can see. I'm not sure if you can see it, but this here is an ethernet to lightning converter, what I have here. So my iPad here is like always powered and it has a wired ethernet connection. And what I'm also capable of doing is basically, so I usually have a second laptop here or something like that for backup, but also only in case I'm doing that front of house situation here. And this one I can also just connect here via ethernet to the internal switch, okay? And also maybe you remember that I had the third ethernet port at the backside of that rack where I was talking about ArtNet uh, to DMX converter. And also uh, like one band I'm supporting is the lighting guy sits here on the right side of me. Okay, he also has a laptop. He is connecting his ethernet of the lighting laptop also here to this switch integrate into here that. And we can just have like one single ethernet line, which is doing lighting and audio uh, data to the stage basically, which is really neat to be honest. And yeah, but yeah, now let's have a look. I think I don't have to explain anything here to the talk, listen, connect. It should be obvious what it is doing, right? I think everyone knows it. But what I want to show you basically what is really nice is the AirPlay functionality because I also have here like an older MacBook Pro. So it's my old one. So I don't care so much if I'm yeah, using it on a, on a live gig usually. And the good point is that AirPlay devices are basically recognized as sound cards or at least as some sort of sound cards here um, in the Mac OS. And you can see that I can just choose UI24R here as standard output device. And if I want to play some sounds then, for example, some background music, then I can just use the standard VLC player, press play here, and it then will push the sound basically over AirPlay through Ethernet to my rack. And you see here already, it is showing DAW1 and DAW2. So as I said, it's really pushing the audio via the front USB audio inside and I'm not wasting any 
analog um, audio channels here, right? So far, so good. I don't want that YouTube is blocking me because of the music here. And of course, I still have the opportunity here. Yeah, play music, of course, over the internal to drag USB player, right? One interesting thing to mention is probably I also integrated here um, a power over Ethernet um, adapter. It lives here. So maybe you remembered uh, that, yeah, access point I have here. And I also have the opportunity basically to connect this Wi-Fi access point here to my front of house rack. So for some situation, it might make sense if you're having like those gigs on which you have like really a big crowd that you want to stay close basically to your front of house position. And it makes sense that this Wi-Fi access point is somewhere near your front of house position, right? But usually I keep it on the stage because then I'm usually only also using my iPad and running around in the crowd. And then usually if I want to go away, then I'm just unplugging that and it should directly go into the fallback Wi-Fi. So now I have disabled Wi-Fi, but you get it basically um, how it usually works. So you see now I'm back connected here and then can just plug that into disable Wi-Fi and it basically falls back into a wired ethernet connection usually. It takes sometimes a couple of seconds, but yeah, that's how it is. Um, I hope you like my rack build up and how I use it. Yeah, but as I said, don't get afraid because of that. So I do not always use it. So only if I really have the space and the situation allows it that I have really an own from the house table. Otherwise I'm usually always going purely via Wi-Fi with my iPad but still having always this cable drum as an ethernet backup. Yeah, and that was it. I hope you enjoyed it and yeah, thank you all for your tips. So, and before is someone asking, okay, how is it uh, like to control the XR18 in a sub mixer while I'm doing actually here the mixing with this app. So you see, this was the gig from last Saturday <clears throat> and you see I had here the line input with keys left, keys right, so the point was our keyboard player was basically having two keyboards and I did basically sub mix over like keys one left right, keys two left right over the XR18 <clears throat> and then put in back basically as a, as a, as a stereo sub mix. But I think the app of XR18, to be honest, is not really nice in comparison to the UI24. So this is way, way much better what the UI24 has, <clears throat> but it is okay-ish to flip around between the apps, I would say. So it, this is kind of working, as you can see here.